physics in the Fick Jacobs equation for diffusion in narrow channels, please. The hybrid floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank to, I, I thank to the organizer for, I mean, letting me give this short talk. Uh, I, I will talk about this uh, uh, long range effect of Fick Jacobs equation. Fick Jacobs equation is uh, an approximate approach to uh, deal with uh, diffusion in narrow channels that is not exactly the uh, single phi diffusion because we are not dealing with the size of the particles but just with the diffusion in a, in a microscopic way. Then I will, I, I, I will talk uh, about this, I mean, maybe this side. <laughs> uh, I will talk about, uh, I mean, I, I will talk to you about this Fick Jacobs approach. Uh, then I will motivate some of these long range effects. I, I mean, indeed, what I want to, but what, what I mean by long range effects is that an extra term in the diffusion equation that goes to the for, uh, to, with the fourth derivative of the of the concentration, and then we calculate this uh, correction. I mean, this extra term for with uh, within this Fick-Jacobs approximation, and then some some conclusions. Um, then what, what is this uh, Fick Jacob uh, approximation? Uh, we know that when uh, the, there's diffusion in a, in a channel, the, the particle, I mean, starts with uh, uh, the ballistic diffusion, then it, it, uh, it behaves like free diffusion, for instance, in this, in this plot for the mean square displacement. And as the particle starts to fill the, the boundaries, it fills these entropic forces, and then for large, uh, long, long uh, uh, times, for large times, then a particle, uh, again, diffuses like a free diffusion, but with a different slope, that is, that we have a, a, an effective uh, diffusion coefficient. <clears throat> then this uh, fick jacob approach, uh, what, what did, uh, we want to do, to do with this, these things is the, uh, to with project uh, over the, the transversal uh, variable to have just the, the effective movement on the, on the longitudinal variable that is, I mean, along the channels, for, for, for instance. Like it, it could be in two or three dimensional cases. Um, uh, then, well, I, I, I want to motivate that there are some experiments that uh, where, where these um, uh, approximation can be can be applied. Like for instance, these transmembrane channels made of of uh, this uh, DNA origami, or some tracking uh, way, uh, of, of particles in this microfluidics. When uh, well, I mean the, the the people put these uh, particles inside of these channels with optical tweezers, and then indeed they manage how to uh, have a different. Uh, I mean, uh, diffusion coefficient in, in the x and y direction, that that's what something needed. Also can be applied to this ATP ASA, right, in this, in this part where the, there are the active sites. And uh, recently, there were some approximation by uh, Miguel Rubí from Barcelona uh, to um, uh, put some of these uh, nanoparticles that carry some drugs inside of these blood vessels that, uh, to, to treat some uh, cancer tumors. Uh, then, I mean, this is like the, the blood uh, current, and then this cylinder here is maximized here, and these uh, little spheres are the uh, cancer cells. And then from the center, uh, <clears throat> the particles need to diffuse to the to the cell, cancer cells in order to, I mean, uh, deliver the drugs from 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 there. And then there's some uh, simulation that says that uh, if one puts some uh, ultrasonic pulses there, that uh, can uh, modify the shape of the channel, then the particle can can uh, go through the channel, and you know, otherwise it can cannot uh, reach the the, the target, for instance, right? And then all this can be uh, modeled within this entropic uh, approximation for the diffusion equation. Okay. Uh, what is uh, done so far is, is 
I mean, I, I just told you here the, the first approximation that is considering the two-dimensional uh, diffusion equation, one can project over this uh, transversal coordinate by defining the marginal distribution here. And what one can obtain if we uh, assume some reflecting boundary condition, I mean Newman boundary condition on the, uh, on, on the large uh, boundary of the, of the, of the channel, one can obtain this, uh, this equation that is called the fig jacobs equation with this extra function here that is just the width function. I mean, this, uh, the width of the, of the, of the channel it, that depends, I, I mean, as, as, as this channel fluctuates o, o, over the longitudinal coordinate, it depends on the position, right? <clears throat> then, um, in some experiments, one needs to consider higher order correction to this, to this equation. I mean, for instance, here, we just put the, the uh, constant diffusivity, right? Uh, but uh, to, to, to match experiments, this can be modified given this uh, uh, effective uh, position-dependent coefficient. And then uh, people in the literature, that there's a lot of uh, uh, I mean, options to <laughs> and, and, and ways to how to obtain the right um, generalization for this coefficient. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, I return to this later, but uh, here are the different possibilities for the uh, shape of this diffusion coefficient that here depends on how fast the uh, the width of the channel change, and it could be done with in, a, in a 2D channels or 3D channels. And uh, there's some, the, the, one of the most common and famous approximations is this, given by Kalinagi Perkus in 2005 or 2006, something like that. And uh, this could be done for, uh, I mean, symmetrical straight channels, but also for channels that has uh, different shapes. Indeed, uh, we we done some some work about. Uh, how to generalize this coefficient for a general 3D channel. Uh, let me go back to slides here. Uh, what, 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 can, what can interpret this, this thing if we rewrite the uh, fig Jacobs equ equation, uh, like um, the Smoldukovsky equation of, I mean, uh, general speaking, a fokker planck equation with this drift term here that is due to the uh, okay, <laughs> due to the shape of the channel, then we have this entropic potential here. Okay, I was so slow, sorry. <laughs> but then uh, we, we want to add this long range term to this equation. This long range, long range term uh, uh, can, be, can be modeled, for instance, by adding this uh, La Laplacian flux here. That is, I mean, the, the Laplacian can be understood at the, as, as the average of nearest, nearest neighbors for, 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 uh, for the particle. And then in a crowded environment, this is the, the one of the simplest approximations to, to this. Uh, also, we can start with this memory kernel and, I mean, for, for instance, makes an ex expansion for this, for this kernel and then consider up to this order to, f to have this, this kind of correction. Also, this appear in a, 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 a different uh, a equation, like this Kahn-Hiller equation. But let me just tell you about this uh, model that is the Chabiwadi model for uh, phototaxis ba based on, on a, a walker, on a random walker that is, I mean, persistent, but also have this uh, census distance that can be, I mean, influenced by these uh, neighbors. And they found this equation with this fourth order terms uh, and also this nonlinear interesting term that uh, takes into account this, this stuff. Okay, well, uh, what, uh, also <laughs> this uh, fourth order terms ap appears in some um, approach to switching uh, diffusion, but I skip this. And what we've done is exactly to consider this uh, fourth order uh, term in the diffusion equation. I mean, this is how it looks like, uh, I mean, when we expand it. And it then projected to one dimension. I mean, let me skip uh, some, some slides here. Uh, and uh, we found this, this equation after some, some standard procedure. This can be related to the Fick-Jacobs standard 
uh, term, but then appears there's these other terms. One uh, interesting term is this here that, uh, I mean, depends on the derivative of y that usually that's not happened in the in the in the standard in the, in the standard uh, approach. Uh, I mean that's why I s s put it there. But after after some rearrangement of the of the uh, terms, one can arrive at this equation, and then we found that uh, there, there's also a kind of flux due to the the uh, this uh, fourth order term, but uh, applied to this uh, approximation that is. I mean, is it, this is the first, uh, where is this, uh, here? <laughs> the first approximation to the, to the density of the particles uh, that, you w w I mean, one can, one can done uh, for, for the expansion. Then one can correct this equation through, the, uh, through the, this kalinai percus coefficient, or, or a simplified version of it, to, to have the, the correction to this diffusion coefficient. Let me show you just here. How, how corrections looks like. Then here we have some correction to the diffusion coefficient. This, I mean, the coefficient for the second derivative and a correction for the drift term. I mean, the red uh, terms here are the, the standard uh, terms in this uh, one-dimensional approach. And here uh, appear, appears this new scale that is the coefficient of the, of the fourth order correction. To the, to the diffusion, to the standard diffusion. And uh, for instance, uh, I mean, these are the corrections. And for instance, uh, we test this, we, we test the, 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 the expression for the, a narrow channel. And we saw that also in the uh, lowest order approximation, I mean, usually in the lowest order, Fig Jacobs has constant diffusivity, but here uh, also have some corrections. Uh, Position-dependent corrections due to this new scale, and then when we go further and try to apply this generalized, uh, I mean, projection method, we need to consider all these three. Uh, all, well, I mean, this, these scales, that is uh, the uh, diffusivity ratio, and here this lambda plus sigma is like uh, the 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 new escape plus the reducibility rate, <laughs> essentially. And what we find so far, I mean, is that the projection methods uh, gives you some extra extra terms that are in, uh, that can be written like, like this. It, 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 it's not just a simple polynomial term, but an operator o o on, on this uh, uh, marginal um, uh, probability, I mean, this uh, concentration of the particles. And then, we find this, this, this correction, yeah, right? With this, this is uh, operators here. And finally, just let me show you the, I mean, uh, no, sorry, this, <laughs> this here, that uh, this is the, the correction for the, uh, I mean, uh, diffusion coefficients that depends on both the, 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 the scales on the biharmonic term and also the, the scale in the, in the diffusivity ratio. And also appears some correction in the, with the same shape for the drift term and so, so on. So this can be uh, interesting. I mean, this is how we expect in this uh, narrow channel approximation to find these uh, large uh, long range effects. And well, I think that's it, sorry for the delay. Yeah. Thank you, Guillermo. Uh, any questions? Ah, oh, sorry. So, uh, following question. So, essentially, you. So, how can I say? So, if if you have an underlying stochastic process which is Markovian, if I'm not wrong, when you write the the the, the uh, you do the Kramers Royal expansion. Mm -hmm. So if you if you tr if it truncates you, you get the diffusion, but now if you add the higher order derivatives, in principle I think you should uh, add uh, infinitely many. Yes, so there is a theorem. No, so okay, the fact yes. that now you are adding by hand the sum of them, 
it's not going to spoil some fundamental property. Uh, uh, because, you know, there is this Paula's theorem that tells you that if your process is a bona fide, a stochastic process, blah, 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 then if you add the four derivatives, then you have to add infinitely many, 76, the eight, and so on and so forth. Hmm. So that's why I, I was a bit, uh, uh, you know, are Warriors, you sure yes. you, you are not going to describe something which is not a stochastic process? Uh, okay, yeah, well, maybe uh, this also did with an, an hydrodynamic effect or, or some, something there, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, you can uh, make a, uh, you can say, well, I mean, maybe it's quantitatively less relevant, but the problem is that uh, you are spoiling a fundamental property, you know, so I would be very, very cautious. Okay. Uh, there is another one. If Thanks for the talk. I have a more um, broader question about the boundary. Are there results known for disordered boundaries if the boundary Wx itself is a random? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is not, uh, I mean, we are not thinking in that case, but th th there's a, a couple of, of, of papers about it. Indeed, <laughs> Gothic have some, some uh, one paper on on this and then, well, in that in that paper, that, that um, they uh, not also put this uh, ran random stuff on the on the boundary, but also an, a, a probability of a stick uh, to the boundary. That, that that is also important in some, for instance, biological biological cases. But here we are just dealing with reflective, simple boundary operations. Yeah, we we are indeed working on some. Uh, diffusing uh, bound, uh, boundary condition, but yeah, it's a different story. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, my first question is that uh, I didn't understand completely where uh, the long range effect uh, comes from. It is more mean field uh, effect uh, that uh, Yes, by, by yeah, the, the, well, as Andrea says, uh, uh, what we need to be careful, but the, the, the main idea is like uh, this uh, uh, second derivative in the flux can, uh, can appear due to the, the average of the nearest uh, neighbors of, of some, some walker, for instance, right, in a, in a random room, yes. And then you put it by, by hand on the flux. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and uh, my other question is that uh, the terms you add uh, to your uh, Fokker-Planck equation was due to the non-linearity of uh, non-Markovian or uh, was due to the non-Markovian uh, effect or was to, due to the uh, mean field effect? Um, I mean, the, the last, the very last uh, effect was due to the uh, the adding of this uh, non uh, large uh, long range effect, but uh, in the in the first uh, part when we add this um, width function, it appears naturally uh, due to the the I mean let me call it entropic effects of the boundary on the on, on, on the equation. Yes, but the, in the in the second case, yes, is due to the, the same flux. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Any further questions? Uh, no, no questions in the chat, I guess. If not, you can send an email to Sarah. Uh, let's thank Guillermo again. Thank you.